Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, we look at the concept of shell. Let's call it cylindrical shells. And this method is finding volume a very different way than the other methods. The other methods are by slicing where we have, we have disc, we have washer, we have cross sections. This method though comes into play when we have um, the, the slicing method possibly doesn't work. Or even if it does work, this method will uh, hopefully help you as well. So I'm going to set it up as if the slicing method's not going to work. And basically, that's to motivate the need for another method. Um, y equals sine x squared. I don't expect you to be able to graph that. So there's the graph. And uh, we're going to find the, the, the volume by rotating this region about the y axis. We run into two problems. There's really three different situations you could find yourself in that makes you want to get away from a method. And we run into two of them here. Um, we, we try to do washer, that's what we know. There's a gap between the region and the axis. So we try to do an outside radius and an inside radius. The outside radius comes from the axis and goes through the region. And the inside radius goes from the axis and just goes up to the region. But the issue that we run into is that Number one, we have horizontal slices, so it's got to be done in terms of y. But look at that equation. How can you solve that? X equals. You'd have to take an arc sign first and then a square root. That right there is enough to run away. <laughs> okay, but um, sometimes you can overcome such a problem. For the most part, run away though. Uh, but we have a problem that we can't overcome. Um, when the outside radius and the inside radius go to the same curve, we can't overcome that. Because, you know, imagine a method, you know, we're supposed to square and subtract. Well, they're the same curve. Um, perhaps we could try to split it in, but it's not symmetric. So we can't do it. In order to find this volume, we need a whole other technique. Okay. This whole slicing perpendicular to the axis of rotation is not working. In this case, we need something else. And that something else is called cylindrical shells. What we're going to have is a bunch of nested cylinders. Okay, let's just look at one of them. So, a cylinder with basically a cylinder removed out um, inside. So, it's like a tube. And we're going to find the volume of such a thing. And then what's going to happen is we're going to have a finite number of these and sum them together get an approximation but uh we want exactness so we're going to let them the uh, number of these go to infinity let's just make sure we can handle one of them though <laughs> so uh the volume of such a shape i want you to think about it as you know cylinder minus cylinder where we have um, the height of each cylinder is the same so we have h for the height and um there's an inner cylinder with a radius i call it r sub inner and an outer um, cylinder, uh, outer radius for the cylinder that's um, going to be, then we're going to find the volume of the outer minus the volume of the inner. Now, the volume of any kind of cylinder is just pi r squared, the area of the base, times the height. And so we take pi r squared for the outer minus pi r squared for the inner. And they both have that same h, so we could factor that h out. We could factor the pi out. And then we have something that looks very familiar. We have a square minus a square. We have a difference of squares. So this slide is basically a derivation slide. It's not something that you'll ever have to do. I just want to motivate the formula and show you how different it is. And then we'll get to the actual um, generic kind of a setup for it. And then we'll be able to get into some examples. And so if you have... A, difference of squares, then you can factor that. Like a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. So outer plus inner minus, uh, times outer minus inner. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna get a little clever here by multiplying and dividing by a version of one. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, two. So uh, multiply by two on the outside, divide by two. Um, put that division underneath the first parentheses because what's gonna happen there is we're going to have the outer plus the inner 
divided by two. That should look familiar. Anytime you add and um, add two items and divide by two, you're talking about the average. And so let me draw in then the average radius in green, call it just R. And, and so then what we're looking at is two pi H and R. That should be familiar, hopefully. Um, this this term that's on the end, the outer minus the inner, that's the thickness of the tube. It's the change in radius. In a calculus class, change in inequality are represented by a triangle at first, <clears throat> and then when we go to infinitely many, then that, that change becomes infinitesimally small, and it becomes, instead of just um, delta R, we'll call it dr. All right, so the volume of this particular shell it's going to be 2 pi r h times delta r. And imagine if you have a, um, a can and a label on the can. If you slice the label and unroll it, you'll have two dimensions for the area of that label. We have the circumference for the dimension of the unrolling and the height. And then um, small thickness to that to give us a volume. And so 2 pi r is the circumference, h is the height, and then we have our thickness. And, and thinking about it that way, it will be helpful to see where the formula comes from. All right. We take this guy, we rotate around the y-axis, we get a bunt cake. All right. So here's just a static drawing of the picture in the first quadrant, the picture in the second quadrant, and we're rotating it around. A typical rectangle, when rotated, creates a shell. Now notice that what's so different about this is that the it's not a slicing perpendicular to the axis. You know, the axis is right down the middle. And so it's uh, it, the action is happening parallel to the axis of rotation instead of perpendicular. All right. Um, there's a left and a right and there's somewhere in the middle. Just basically, let's call it xi bar, the average distance that the rectangle is off of the y-axis, xi bar. Okay, it's basically going to be the, the xi minus 1, the one bef the, right before that, the xi is the one after that, and the xi bar is in the middle, midpoint. Okay, and so we have our formula for the volume of the shell, and we're going to replace the r radius with this xi bar. It's a distance, horizontal distance, xi. It'll change as the rectangle moves. That's where that counter i comes from. And then um, how tall the rectangle is, is the height. But in this particular setup, it's the function height, f of x. Let's call it f of xi bar. You gotta evaluate it someplace, so let's call it xi bar. That's your height. Now let's plug these into our formula. Um, so we have, let's say in place of R, we have Xi bar. In place of H, we have F of Xi bar. And this is just one particular shell. We wanna add up the volume of all the shells. So what we get is a summation sign, a finite number at first, okay? And then what we're going to do is uh, let the number of them go to infinity. We'll get a better and better approximation as we let the number of these go to infinity. And that's our Riemann sum, which leads to integration. We place the xi bars with x, and you have exactly the formula that you need. For this particular setup, where we have the, um, the region is formed by finding the area under the curve and above the x-axis as our region, and then rotating that region about the y-axis. This will be the formula. But we need something in general. What if I want to rotate about the x-axis or some other horizontal or vertical line? So on the next slide, we have the general formula. There's a radius and there's a height. You get the radius by coming from the axis. And it's very important to draw in a typical rectangle. And the radius is the distance that that rectangle is away from the axis of rotation. And then the height is how tall the rectangle is. 
Now, it doesn't have to be in X. We can also do these in Y. You see, and so it depends on whether your axis of rotation is vertical or horizontal. We just saw a vertical axis of rotation, and it was done in X because the, the typical rectangle was upright. So just to point out the difference between the two methods, disk slash washer is done by slicing perpendicular to the axis of rotation, while cylindrical shells is done parallel to the axis of rotation. So let's say the axis of rotation is a vertical line. Perpendicular to that would be a horizontal rectangle. Horizontal rectangles mean you do the integral in y. But if you're doing shell, you don't slice perpendicular. You have a slice, or you have a, basically a rectangle that is parallel to that, and you rotate that. And so that means the integral is done in x when you have a, a vertical rectangle. The orientation of the rectangle dictates the variable. And these are at odds against each other. The orientation will be at odds by the way it's drawn. One is drawn perpendicular, while the other one is drawn parallel. If the rectangle if the rectangle is vertical, then integral is done in x. When the rectangle is horizontal, integral is done in y. All right, so that's enough. Um, went past my 10 minute mark, but in the next video we'll launch into a bunch of examples and we'll start to look at both methods at the same time, trying to figure out which one to choose. All right, thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. And I'm here to help you through this. If you have any trouble, let me know. Comment down below, like, and subscribe. <laughs> Take care.